Hey guys, it's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. I've missed you guys. I haven't been live since before Christmas, probably a week before Christmas. I took about three weeks off. It was a much needed uh, break for my brain and my sanity. And so um, it was so good. We um, took some time off for Christmas and then went down to Florida and spent a little over about 10 days or so. I started to say a little over a week or so with my grandmother who is 84 and has a winter home down there. My parents also have a winter home in the same community. We did lots of bike riding. We hung out at the pool. It wasn't as warm as it usually is in Florida, but we still had a great time. I feel like my shirt is, I don't know being funny. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, Joanne. Hi, Cassie. I missed you too. Hey, Heather. Hello, Elizabeth. Uh, funny story. Right before I went live earlier, um, I was putting some food in the crock pot and I went to dump the sausage in the crock pot and it splattered like crock pot juice all over my shirt, which I remembered my mother gave me some Tide to tied to go wipes something or other so I rushed and grabbed those and like scrubbed it out so hopefully I got it out because I don't want to stay in this white shirt hey Nina I'm glad I'm back too I've been missing you guys hey Linda from snowy New York it's not snowing here in Kentucky but they are saying that there's a chance we might get some at the first part of next week so crossing my fingers over here because we love a little bit of snow I'm also live over on TikTok so um if you see me looking over there that's what I'm doing and I'm live on Facebook and YouTube now if you're a TikTok watcher the replays for these will also be available on Facebook and YouTube, so you can come back and watch them whenever. Melly says, I'm officially retired. I can see you more often. Yay, Melly! Round of applause for Melly. That's so exciting. So happy for you. Hey, Rosemary. So let me tell you what we're going to be doing today. And I kind of came up with this at like 11 p.m. at night last night. That's <laughs> when all of our best ideas hit, right? I was Last night, I was laying down in bed, and I'm like, I need to decide what I want to paint so the guys can get it cut on the laser machine for me. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm in the mood to paint something cheery and valentine -y. And we had come out with some new Valentine designs uh, over Christmas break, which, by the way, you guys are used to me coming live on Fridays and telling you about the new design releases and all that stuff. And I just haven't been live on Friday. So you might have missed some new templates that we released. So uh, like the week of Christmas, we released five new Valentine templates. I was looking to see if I had them saved somewhere, but I bet I don't. I don't. Um, but anyway, you can go check those out at shopdoorhangers.com. But this was one of them. And it was one of the five um, gingerbread designs. So gingerbread for Valentine seems a little odd, but the way we did it is super cute. Like you could do a door hanger. You could do a shelf sitter. You could do um, some like tiered tray pieces, like if you wanted to do smaller ones, and this could all coordinate. So these are like gingerbread cookies on a plate. What we're going to do is we're going to paint the plate pink, and then the cookies are going to be gingerbread color. And then we're going to take it enough up a notch by using spackle and a little piping bag, and we're going to pipe on the X's and O's and the borders of each cookie. So these will look like iced cookies when we're done. It's going to be so cute. Um, so that was my brilliant 11 p.m. at night idea that I came up with last night. I'm like, let's do it. So I'm excited to do this. Um, Heather says, Nebraska, we just had a blizzard and got seven inches of snow. Wow. Hey, Damon. Uh, Tabitha said, in South Carolina, praying the storm doesn't get bad. I hope it doesn't either. Tornadoes are scary business. Damon said, you're being extra. I'm always extra. <laughs> I tell Charlie that, my daughter, all the time. I'm always like, girl, you're so extra. Because she is. She's extra all the time. Um, you should see every day after Christmas, she was like modeling all the new clothes that she got. And she's over the top with everything. All the accessories. I'm like, she is such my daughter. <laughs> uh, it's, it's funny to watch. But anyway, let's get started painting, shall we? If you want to paint along with me on the replay and do this project later, uh, the template or the wood blank is available at shopdoorhanger.com. I did put the direct link here in the Facebook uh, video description. And so the template is the digital version. You download it, you cut your own wood piece or trace this on a canvas or whatever you want to do it on. This would be really cute, like a little square canvas. Um, and then the wood blank comes in like five different sizes. You could get four inch, which would be perfect for like a little ornament or a shelf sitter of some kind. Um, there's six inch, which is a little bit bigger, eight inch, 12 or 18. This is the 18 that I'm working on today. It's perfect for a door. Um, <laughs> Dixie says she's definitely your mini me. Before we get started, I'm just because I'll forget to tell you while I'm talking in the video. Let's just show you the colors we're working with. I've got six colors here. 
So I've got two shades of pink. I've got cactus flower. If you don't have cactus flower, coral works also. Just kind of a light corally pink. Wild berry. Wild berry is an older color from Deco Art. It's been around a while. It's definitely like a rose, rosy pink. Um, then we got sable brown. This is the lighter color of our gingerbread. And then we've got milk chocolate. These these three are kind of got to go together to kind of create a little bit of shading on our cookies. Milk chocolate and dark chocolate. So three colors of brown. And I've got my white handy because we are going to be painting the icing with white first before we pipe it on. That way our piping doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. <laughs> and it'll still look good. Um, Elizabeth said she just printed this template this morning. Awesome. I'm glad you were already planning on painting it. And y'all, it is getting warm in here. I'm going to take this cute little sweater off. Even though it was cute, it's going to make me hot. Worked up some energy this morning. Okay. Um, okay. Let me think for just a second. Do I want to paint my plate first or my cookies first? I think I'm not sure that it's going to matter either way. So we may just start with the plate. Um, and we're using this light pink color. And it's going to go everywhere around our cookies. And so just start filling in those areas. I think when we cut this one on the laser, the lines got messed up. So you may see me like going outside the lines a little bit, but it's because I'm trying to fix where we didn't do the lines just right. Either that or a line is missing or something. It's okay. I have an imagination. I can fill it in. It's going to be fine. <laughs> what have you guys been working on? Did anybody, okay, hang on. I mean, let me not ask six questions at one time. Let's start with this question. What was your favorite Christmas gift that you received? What was your favorite Christmas gift? And while I'm waiting, I will tell you mine. Yay, Linda, you joined the Template Club. Was that your Christmas gift to yourself? <laughs> hey, Granny Kathy. Kathy Evitz is my mother-in-law. So y'all say hi to Granny Kathy in the comments. Um, my favorite Christmas gift was a Harvest Right freeze dryer. And if you've been watching my Instagram stories, you probably knew that already. I've been sharing on my Instagram stories and stuff, our little freeze drying adventures. We have freeze dried uh, apples, bananas, uh, taffy. That's really good. Um, what did we do the other day? Ice cream. We did ice cream the other day. So those are not necessarily things that are like things you would want to preserve for like a long time because freeze drying is originally supposed to be intended for food preservation. Um, because when you freeze dry food, it can last up to 25 years if you store it properly. And so that is really cool. Hang on, there's a fuzz ball on my door hanger here. But uh, freeze drying things like candy and ice cream is just for fun snacks. It just kind of makes for really fun snacks. And so we've been playing and experimenting and trying out all the things. But eventually, I would like to get into more of like the prepping, preparing meals ahead and like freeze drying food for, you know, whenever power goes out and you need just like a quick meal because you could freeze dry even your leftovers. Um, like if I had left, let's say leftover meatloaf, for example, or leftover soup, I can freeze dry that and it will be dry and crunchy and put, like I can store it in a mason jar or uh, a mylar bag. And as long as I make sure all the oxygen is out of that bag and I make sure that it is stored, um, in like a safe container, like the Mylar, it will last up to 25 years. And if I need to reheat it to eat it, all I got to do is pour a little bit of boiling water in there. It soaks it right back up and it's reconstituted and ready to eat, which seems so crazy. Can you imagine eating meatloaf that's like 20 years old? <laughs> that sounds disgusting, but I, I think it's really cool. Um, I haven't tried it yet. So let me go to your question, your answers now. What were your favorite things that you got for Christmas? Uh, Candace got an iPad Pro. Congrats, Candace. Um, Sharon said, having the family together, that is priceless. Melly got a cross necklace. Cassie got new Birkenstocks. Linda got a circle jig. Now, if y'all don't know what a circle jig is, it is a little attachment that you can put on a piece of plywood and it will allow you to like draw the, and cut the perfect circle. Um, so if you struggle with cutting out rounds or circles um, by hand, try getting a circle jig. They sell them, um, I think at Lowe's and places like that. Sharon got herself a new puppy. How sweet. It's a great Pyrenees. I've heard those are really great chicken dogs, like protecting and guarding your chickens. That's what I've heard anyway. Um, Nina got a Glowforge Aura. 
congrats. How, have you cut anything yet, Nina? Don't leave it in the box. Get it out and start cutting stuff. <laughs> Laura said, getting over COVID. That is a good Christmas gift. COVID is awful. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Um, Cassie got Birkenstocks. Elizabeth got an iPad. She said, now I can take your class. Yay. Uh, Tabitha said, a hot and cold brew Keurig. Cool. I'm not a coffee drinker, but that's neat. Door hanger mirror, jo door, door, a door hanging mirror jewelry box. I tried to say door hanger. <laughs> Did you hear it? <laughs> um, okay, Kat, Sherry says, does the food explode when you freeze dry? No, it doesn't explode. Some things do swell up or get larger and some things actually get a little bit smaller and some things stay exactly the same. All it's doing is extracting all the water from whatever's in it. Um, shoes and a new blanket. What is a steel tongue drum? I have no idea what that is, Shaylin. <laughs> Tiffany got a new vehicle. Then Danelle got a gift certificate to Southern Adornments. Awesome. We just shipped you an order yesterday, actually. Wendy got an ice maker. Uh, Rosemary said spending kit time with kids in the Outer Banks. That's wonderful. I'm so glad the weather was good. Uh, Pam got a Glowforge Aura and has been using it. Wonderful. Uh, Kathy said I got to keep my husband. He had emergency. Emergency open heart surgery. I hope he's working well, Kathy. I'm sure he is if you're taking care of him. <laughs> Your food explores flows more often. And mine has never done that, so I, I don't know. Maybe they've updated them or made them a little better. Let's do a second cut on this pink while we chat. Um, something that I've been wanting to tell you guys that I should have just started off with a bang and told you this at the very beginning of the live because it's super important, is that on Friday, January 12th, that's this week, can you believe we're already nearly halfway through January this week? Uh, we're going to be selling tickets to Southern Adornments Live. Now, this is happening November 15th and 16th of this year in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. We're going to be having it at the Sevierville Convention Center, which is attached to the, the um, Wilderness at the Smokies Resort. And so um, our hotel reservations are at the Wilderness at the Smokies. So you can stay with us. You can bring your kids. They can play in the water park. Um, at that in the winter time, they're actually going to have um, an outdoor ice skating rink as well because they usually have like an outdoor water park. But of course, in the winter, that's closed, so it converts into a winter wonderland. And they have a ice skating rink and lights and all that kind of cool stuff. So bring the kids, bring the grandkids, family, come and craft and paint with me. It's going to be a wonderful time. I will warn you, we opened up ticket sales for this event right after the one that we did in Destin, Florida at the end of September. They're already 70% sold out just to the people who were there who got to buy their ticket to next year, the virtual people and our members of Painters Clubhouse. Those groups, three groups of people right there bought 70% of next year's tickets. Now, if that's not a testimonial to how much people love Southern Adornments Live, I don't know what is. It speaks for itself. I mean, once you come to one of them, or you watch one of them virtually, you're like, I've got to get there next year. And so how many of you guys, I want to see a show of hands in the comments. How many of you guys already have your ticket for next year? Oh, that's so cool. Julie says her son is a lifeguard at the wilderness. How cool. I probably saw him when I was there in August. Cassie says, exciting. It'll be my first time attending Southern Adornments Live. Cassie has her tickets. Uh, Lori and Tammy and Linda do. Uh, there is a Facebook group, Sheila. I don't know if they've started adding people to it yet or not. I think they're going to send out an email sometime later this month um, to invite you guys to the Facebook group. That's where you can like find a roommate if you need to, uh, make travel plans, things like that. Um, and there's also information in that group about booking your hotel room. But essentially, if you want a shortcut to booking your hotel room, all you got to do is call the Wilderness at the Smokies and say, hey, I need to book a, a room. And I need the Southern Adornments Live rate, and they will hook you up. You can't do it like on the computer. You have to actually pick up the phone like we did in the 80s and call. <laughs> Cassie still needs to book her room. Okay, good. Um, Susan said, did you miss a place between the two bottom parts? It's likely. <laughs> I totally did. I'm so glad somebody's paying attention to what I'm doing, because when I'm talking and painting, sometimes I miss a thing. So, yeah, this whole area is supposed to be pink. We'll just, we'll just do it real quick. Slap it on there. I'm also going to do a little bit of shading on this, but I'm trying to get a good base coat going first. If you're just now tuning in, the plan for this project is to paint plate pink, do a little bit of shading on it, 
paint the cookies brown like gingerbread. And then we're going to use spackle and a piping bag to pipe on the X's and O's and the borders around each one. So it'll look like 3D cookies. Um, Joanne says, me, I have mine. My sister and I are coming together. Yay, Joanne. Uh, Brenda said, last year was my first live and I loved it. Booked this year in the Smokies. I'm so excited. I want to know y'all's feedback. I have not, I have not figured out what, where 2025 is going to be. I don't, don't want to get ahead of myself, but would y'all like to go back to Destin in 2025? Or are we hoping that it stays at the Smokies every year? <laughs> I ain't going to be mad about either one of those because I love both of those places. They're, they're my favorite. <laughs> Dixie said on the left, did I miss another spot? Not. I did right here. Good eye, Dixie. Thank you. Right there. That I thought for some reason the lines are confusing me. See, even I get confused with the lasered lines. Um, Tiffany said, I just hopped on. What did I miss about the event? We're talking about Southern Adornments Live. That's the big event that I do every year. We've done four of them so far. Two of them were in Nashville, Tennessee in 2019 and 2020. And then we had one in Dallas, Texas in 2022. <laughs> the years are blurring together. And then this year was in Destin, Florida in September. Next year's, or this year's perhaps, we're in 2024 now, is going to be happening in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee in Sevierville, September 5th, sorry, slow down, Tamara, November 15th and 16th of 2024. And so if y'all want more information, about that, oh, don't get, I just got paint on my shirt. Uh, I'm going to have the, I'm going to put the link in here for you. Actually, you know what? I don't know why I'm doing this because I did put the link up in the video description, didn't I? I forgot. I helped myself out and didn't even know it. But this link right here, southernadornmentslive.com, will take you to a page that has more information about what the event's all about, what all it entails. It's even got photos from last year's event, things like that there. And it's got a little bit more information about um, like pictures from the resort or where everybody's going to be staying. And so you can go check it out on there. What other questions y'all have? What are you going to put in the piping bag? Oh, it's going to be this lightweight spackle. It's called Fast and Final. You can get it at Walmart. It's nice and cheap. Yeah, it is a door hanger that I'm painting. Sorry, TikTok. I didn't see your comment. Gail is voting for going back to the beach next year. I love going to the beach. Hey, Sarah, we're twinsies today. I did have on my cute heart-shaped sweater, but it got hot here in the craft room and I had to pull it off. So somebody commented this morning on a Zoom call how cute I looked. And I said, well, I can't take credit for it. My stylist, Sarah, <laughs> my stylist, Sarah, came up with this outfit. And um, all down, even down to the earrings. I've even got my little heart-shaped earrings on. So it was in my framed monogram box. Was it last year, Sarah, that this was in the monogram box? I think so. All right, y'all, it looks like I've got all the good coats here on the pink. So I think we're done with that. I'm going to drop that in the thing. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of white and mix it with my pink because I want to take the same color of pink and I want to make it just a tad lighter. And I need a round tip brush. And what we're is we're going to blend this and this is going to kind of be like a highlight oops there's a paint booger in there yeah so we're just making a lighter shade of that pink and then this is going to go along here like a highlight see and then it's going to go up here And then it's also going to go right here between these cookies. So it's kind of like the ring of the plate and then also over here. Make sure I got that covered good. I don't want it blending too much into the plate color. There we go. When will the January blank box be sent? I don't, oh, we just shipped everything yesterday, Liza. So it should be on its way. Everything, all the, if you had a pending order, we had like 
I think it was nearly 500 orders pending yesterday. And we got them all out yesterday uh, because we'd been gone for three weeks. And so it was awesome. We got caught up. <laughs> all right. So there's the line of our plate. Um, and then I'm going to take a little bit of this wild berry color. And this is going to be kind of like a little bit more of a shadow. And this is going to follow this other line right here. So I'm just kind of pulling it along the edge of that highlight to make a darker line. And I actually dip in a little bit in my original pink too, because that wild turned out to be a tad darker than I wanted. So if you need to, you can even blend your wild berry into this color before you start. So just kind of do like this, dip and just kind of blend it. And it kind of makes like a really pretty lipstick color. <laughs> Looks like one of my lipsticks. Uh, this color is also going to go around the outside of the plate, like so. Oh, not quite enough. It's not dark enough. Notice I'm not moving my wrist or my elbow. I'm actually leaning in my chair to make that line. I'm going to twist the thing and I'm going to do it again. I get a much smoother line when I do that. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some white and we're gonna do another highlight at the very top of the plate. Let me rinse that round tip brush out. Um, questions? Sandy said, please make the next year's show in Texas. Sandy, San Antonio is a great area. We did Texas um, last year. That was a bit of a challenge because it's so far from home and I'm not familiar with Texas. So it helps to keep it in cities that I'm familiar with at least, but I don't know. Ken Letta says, love you. Also the sweater you just took off. Thank you, Ken Letta. <laughs> we did bust some tail, Dixie. Now it did help that like 370 of those packages that we sent out yesterday were already boxed and just needed labels. So I may be like, misconstruing the work that we did yesterday. It was a lot of work, but at least a lot of it was already boxed up because we had boxed up big box of blanks before we even went on Christmas break. That way we could come home, just put the labels on and send them out the door. Okay. So that highlight goes there. I'm doing another one right here. And I, I am just looking at the photo y'all, the photo example of how this is supposed to look. And I'm just kind of using that as my guide. So if you struggle with figuring out where to put your highlights, just look at the picture. And then let's do a white one. Sorry, I'm gonna flip this around on this side right here also, because there's one on the picture. There we go. Okay. Now that our plate, I'm getting a little crazy here. Now that our plate is painted, we can start painting our gingerbread cookies. <laughs> Dixie said, work smarter, not harder. Amen to that. Hey, Ann, thank you. It's good to be back. Cassie's voting for Ohio in 2020. <laughs> um, I think most of my folks are in the South. I need to stay in the South. Melly votes for Texas. Danelle votes for the Smokies. <laughs> Either way, this year is in the Smokies. So if y'all have questions about that, I'll be happy to answer them. Tickets go on sale again Friday, January 12th. That's this week. Hmm, that's not a good sound. Paint bottle's nearly out. Um, so if you haven't gotten a chance to get your ticket yet, that's when you can snag one. All right, for these gingerbread cookies, we're just going to paint the entire heart brown to start with. So simple enough. This is a good one for beginners because there's not a lot of technical stuff you're going to have to do. The only thing that might be a little technical is when we start using this spackle and the piping bag. If any of you guys have never used like a piping bag to do icing, um, the mechanics of that can be a little wonky if you're not used to like holding it in your hand and the pressure. But I will say my daughter, Charlie, who is eight years old, handles a piping bag like it's nobody's business. That girl looks like she was born to be a cake decorator. I handed her a piping bag filled with spackle for a project she had to do for school back last, I think it was last, it was either last spring or of this semester or like August. I don't know. Um, and she was like, I got this mom, give it to me. I can do it. And I'm like, no, no, you're just, you know, the control freak in me is like, you're going to mess it up. But she handled it like a pro. That girl was like piping that stuff out and doing a great job. And I'm like, well, maybe you're going to be a cookie or a cake decorator when you grow up. I don't know. 
She's just super multi-talented, but I was shocked that an eight-year-old could handle that piping bag so well. So if she can do it, you can do it, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> she impresses me every day with the things that she does. Um, speaking of Christmas gifts, Charlie got herself um, a her own Archon mount to do videos with. Um, it's It's like a thing that holds your phone so that you can film tutorials and things. She also got her own paint storage cube to hold all of her paints. And I, I, I didn't stock it full, but I probably did fill it up about a third of the way. I wanted to give her some room for some additional paint as, as, as she grows. Um, and so that is all in her bedroom now. She kind of has her own little mini craft studio in her bedroom. Uh, she also got a mini ring light. She got a neon light that hangs up in her bedroom that looks like a paint palette, which I'm kind of jealous of. Uh, and it hangs up above her bed. And I'm like, that is so cute. I want that in my craft room, but it's Charlie's. I can't take it. Um, <laughs> Tiffany says, this will be my first craft event at Southern Dormants. I'm so excited. I've been to a few rehab, rehabbed events. That's, oh yes. I've been to some of Brooks too. I've taught at a couple of Brooks. Um, I taught at one of hers in Nashville and then one of her business retreats that was here in my hometown, I taught at this past spring. So I may have seen you there if you if you were at the one that I came to. Robin says, what do you use to hang up your door hangers? Robin, I staple jute string to the back of them. I tie a knot in each end of the jute string and then just staple right below the knot. Um, I think we're actually getting ready to make a blog post about how to do this as well with photos and everything. Because um, I just like took the photos yesterday of the project. So if that's something you struggle with, we'll have that on the blog before long. There's all kinds of great stuff on the blog. There's a blog post about how I built this desk that I'm painting on right now. There's blog posts about how I built the pallet wall that's hanging up behind me. Um, there's blog posts about door hangers and door hanger projects. And so whatever, whatever tickles your fancy, we probably got it on the blog. <laughs> um, Danelle says, would love to see a picture of her paint sign. Okay, I'll see if I can put it on my story then after the video is over. I'm sure she would love to show y'all. I don't even know where it came from. Her aunt, uh, Whitney, who she calls Nene, got it for her. Whitney is the one, of the one that's in Cotton Chaos. So if you guys follow the Cotton Chaos girls, Whitney got it for her. Okay, filling in that last cookie. Making them brown. And then we're going to add a little bit of texture, not texture, but like fake texture to these using a sponge because I want them to look more cookie-ish. Um, uh, let's see. I think I want, I want to try that with a sponge, but I'm not 100% confident that I can pull it off. <laughs> As with most things on Facebook Live, I'm like, um, is this going to turn out good? Or is it going to be like a crime scene candy cane fail that we had that one time? I don't know. All right. The coverage on that looks pretty decent, so we're going to stop there. Um. Sheila says our 4-H kids loved working with cake decorating. I bet they did. Robin says, I'm excited for 2024 live. My room is booked. I just can't get here fast enough. First ever in person. My sister and I are extremely excited. I am too, Nora. Uh, Robin, I can't, like, now that the plan is in place and I know where we're going, I'm like, can it get here fast enough? Why did I plan this in November? Why is it not in February? <laughs> because there just isn't enough time. I cannot plan it that fast, but I'm excited too. The audio is scratchy. Oh, man. I wonder why. Anybody else having trouble hearing me? <laughs> Brenda remembers the crime scene candy cane. Um, okay. Mm, I'm a little nervous about this part. So, uh, so this is the part where we add a little bit of texture. Whoa. That paint just burped on me. Did you see that? It literally shot paint out of the bottle and at me. Um, there must have been pressure built up in there. I'm getting a little bit of this milk chocolate. What's it called? Paint. <laughs> milk chocolate paint. And a little bit of the dark chocolate paint. And if y'all didn't notice, I'm using a foam paper plate today instead of an egg carton or an ice cube tray. Because I knew that today I was going to be doing lots of like color blending. I probably just got paint all over my glass. Didn't realize there was paint on my hand. Yup. I'm a mess today, y'all. Hold on. I make, I'm making a mess. Brown paint all over my glasses.
These are pair eyewear toppers in case you're wondering why the front of my glasses came off. Uh, but anyway, I'm using a foam paper plate today because I knew I was going to have to be doing lots of texture. Oh, y'all thought it was because of the storms. Hmm. I wonder if they'll be, it may not be that way on the replay. Let's hope that it's not. Okay. Um, we're just going to experiment here. Let's dip just a little bit in this milk chocolate. We'll pounce a little bit off and then I'm going to see what this looks like for texture. This is what I wanted to do. I want to, Ooh, I kind of, kind of liking it so far. I wanted to kind of create like a texture so that it looks like a cookie a little bit cookier. So you don't need a lot of paint on your sponge. And this is like a piece of a cheap sponge from the Dollar Tree. It's just a little piece of it. No particular special thing about it. I also feel like I need a lighter, lighter brown to do this with. So I may have to, whoop, I got too much paint on there. Because if it doesn't look like a light texture, it's almost too much paint. But that's okay. We'll just kind of dab it in right through there. This was the reason why I was debating on whether or not I should paint the plate first or the cookies first. So when you go to paint yours, if you're worried that you won't be able to do this sponging without getting some on your plate, you might want to paint your cookies first. That way, if you get outside the lines of the cookie, you don't have to like do a whole lot of touch up. Is that even showing up on camera? <laughs> Chesna says, I'm new here, but so excited to get started on a new hobby. Well, Chesna, welcome to Pandora's box of door hanger painting. <laughs> I don't even know if that's the way to say it, but here at Southern Dorms Live, this is all we do. We paint door hangers and things that kind of go well with door hangers. I design um, these and I have a design team who helps me design them. We come out with 20 to 25 new designs every month. I don't paint all of them live, but every Tuesday, and it used to be at 11 a.m. Central, but now we've moved it to noon. So if, in case y'all didn't hear that announcement, I'm live on noon on Tuesdays now instead of 11 o'clock. Um, I go live and I paint with you guys. And so um, I also have a private membership called the Painter Clubhouse where we do this out of a Facebook group. And um, those designs are Painters Clubhouse exclusive. And so that's really fun also. If you get really into this, you may want to check out the Painters Clubhouse. In the spring, we're going to be doing a spring workshop where it's kind of like your chance to test out what it's like to be in the Painters Clubhouse. You can do a project with us inside the Facebook group and um, see all the projects that everybody else in that group is painting. And it's just going to be a lot of fun. So that'll be happening uh, mid to end of March. And so we'll be announcing more about that in February. But for right now, if you want to join us in the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, you can grab your ticket to our live event. That's happening November 15th and 16th, this Friday. Tickets go on sale. And like I said, we're already 70% sold out. So um, I would not be surprised if those tickets don't sell out over the weekend. Uh, and then we're completely sold out. So there is a payment plan option. Oh, I didn't even mention the best part, y'all. By buying now um, and securing your ticket this early in the year, we are offering $100 off your ticket. And so if you buy your ticket this weekend, you're getting $100 off. If by chance there are any tickets after this weekend, um, then those people that buy in the future won't be getting that good of a deal. Okay, there's all of our texture with that color. And that's just with the milk chocolate. Let me see if I kind of show you. Can you see? You can kind of see the texture. Looks cool. Um, I want to do a little bit with this dark chocolate. So this is darker brown. Not as much, but just a little bit. So I'm dabbing in it and dabbing off. And let's see. I want it to kind of be like right through here. I kind of wanted to create like a little shadow, almost like this cookie is tucked under that cookie. I'll put a little there. Whoop, I just got outside the lines right there. Let me see if a baby wipe will clean that up instead of having to paint over it. Where are my baby wipes? Angel says you can't really see the difference. You can in person. Sometimes on video, it doesn't show up as good. So I apologize for that. Oh, yeah. Baby wipe. That fixed it. So keep your baby wipe handy. Okay. Now for the dark chocolate again. Dabbing in it. I'm going to put a little bit on this side of this cookie. Oh, 
it's subtle. It's not like a big obvious, obvious difference, but I wanted them to look textured. here. If you don't like the texture you first you dab, just keep dabbing on top of that spot and it kind of softens it up and spreads it out a little bit more. Like I had a couple spots that looked like the corner of the sponge and I was like, eh, I don't like that. So I just kept dabbing. Now we need a little bit on this cookie right up here. I'll do some right through here. So I got three colors brown. We got sable brown, milk chocolate, and dark chocolate. The sable brown is the background color. The other two colors are the sponge pounced colors. I'm thinking about incorporating just a little bit more of the sable brown, but doing it with a little bit of white mixed in. So let's test that to create oh, just a little bit of a highlighting texture. So I've already got white on my plate, so I'm, that's why it's kind of beneficial to kind of use a paper plate like this. You can just keep, I mean, not a paper plate, a foam plate. I feel like the paint does dry out a little quicker on these because it's not like in a nice, neat little puddle, but it is kind of nice when you're doing sponge painting and mixing colors and things like that. Cassie says, can I still sign up for a big box of blanks? Um, I don't know. You may have to use customer service. I don't know if they kept signups open or not, or if it closed. I'm not 100% sure. So email us at info at com and uh, find out there. That might be a little too, <laughs> it's a little more than I wanted. Hold on. Take a little off. Well, I don't know. I'm, I can't decide if I like this. Hold on. I might have to add just a little bit more milk chocolate back on top of it because I got a little carried away. I'm like a little kid over here, just sponge painting away and having having fun. Okay. Um, I think I got a little too much white in it. It's part of the problem. So it's, it's being like too bold. It's not blending enough. So I'm going to put a little bit more of that sable brown back in it. Soften it up. Okay, I like that a lot better. It's a lot softer. And sometimes you don't have to go all the way back into the little pool of paint. You can just go back on top of paint that you were sponging off because it's like less. Okay, this is one of those door hangers where you're going to have to trust the process because I feel like it is looking like a bit of a hot mess right now. Trust me trust me we're gonna make this turn out good we're gonna do spackle and it's gonna look fabulous when we're done okay let's stop with the sponging <laughs> um okay yeah you guys with the tornado warnings y'all need to take shelter <laughs> bianca says that looks like chocolate that's it's i don't know they could be chocolate cookies they could also be gingerbread cookies i don't know they definitely look different and I said I was going to paint white underneath the spackle. Now I'm thinking it through and I'm like, do I want to? I think I think I still do. Um, reason being is because sometimes the spackle will come out a little less than perfect. And if you put paint underneath the spackle, it kind of softens the look of it. And you don't have to get the spackle just right for it to look good. So I think we're just going to play it safe. We're going to do some white under our spackle before we proceed. Uh, the next shipment of Big Box of Blanks just went out yesterday, Cassie. But after that, the next one will go out by April 1st. Okay, let's make sure that was good and dry before we proceed. Um, I need like a, a filbert tip brush is best for this. I'm having a hard time finding the size of one that I want. So I may have to settle for something else. Oh, here we go. This is the one I'm looking for. So it looks like this, kind of like the end of a fingertip. These rounded shapes make really nice rounded um, letters on our X's and O's. 
I'm going to get some white. I'm actually going to put this white in my ice cube tray instead of on my plate because I do need it to stay in a nice, neat little puddle. And my plate's a mess right now. Uh, Pam says, the Flamingals want to welcome all of you to the biggest and best party ever. Hashtag Southern Dormus Live. Amen to that, Pam. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are coming back for next year. Okay, we're going to paint our letters. And these are pretty big, thick, chunky letters, too. So you might have a little bit of a, a time of it with the spackle, like making big enough spreads of the icing to fill these letters on a smaller project you won't like if you're doing like a 12 inch size or something a little smaller it'll be easier but these letters are big and thick on this door hanger so i'm gonna have to like be intentional about when i'm squeezing out that spackle to do it nice and slow so that it comes out thick enough to cover the letter My face is itching. My hair keeps tickling my face. Does it matter what type of paint you use? Carol asks. Um, I recommend Craft Acrylic Paint. Mine is Deco Art brand. Uh, there are other brands out there, but I use the a Deco Art Americana line. The coverage and everything is really, really good. So if you're going to be following along with a lot of my videos, that's probably the paint that you're going to want to get just so that you're kind of using the same colors I'm using and getting the same results. And you can shop that at your local store or on the DecoArt website. Okay, that looks a little rough right now, but that doesn't matter. We're covering it up with spackle. This is just sort of our base coat. It is a little harder to like get in the cracks and crevices right there with this type of brush. So if you're struggling with it, feel free to swap brushes. But I do think it's ideal for doing the letters in the middle of these cookies. And I'm not perfectly staying inside these lines, just so you know. So Y'all don't have to either. You're there as a guide, not as a prison. See, so doing this X with these nice, smooth little round edges is a whole lot easier with a brush like this. See, I'm like pushing down with full pressure to fill that in. And it does it flawlessly. <laughs> uh, thank you, Becca. This is an oldie but a goodie from Fran by Sarah, this t-shirt. Elizabeth says, I've tried other brands and they don't have the coverage like DecoArt. Hobby Lobby and Michaels sells them both. I agree. I used to get my paints at Walmart. And um, once I started using DecoArt, I never looked back. <laughs> I started giving all of my cheaper paints to Charlie. I was like, "This, these are your paints, baby girl. Of course, at the time she was like four years old. I was like, you use these. Mamas are the good paints. Of course, now we have such an abundance of the Deco Art Americana in our house that that's what she uses as well. What are we thinking so far? Are we a little nervous about how it's going to turn out? Don't be shy. You can tell me, be like, Tamara, I think you've lost your mind. Or are you like trusting the process? You know, it's going to, you know, it's all going to come together. You've watched enough of my tutorials that you're like, hmm, she's only had like one really bad fail. That was that candy cane, <laughs> candy cane, crime scene candy cane. Now, that was paint pouring. Paint pouring is, is fun, but it's not my specialty. <laughs> uh... And I don't want to do a second coat on all of this since we're going to cover it in spackle. But I didn't do a very good job in this first heart, heart so I'm going to go over it one more time. I think my paint, my brown paint, might have still been a little bit wet because it kind of like blended with the white. <laughs> Laura said, can't wait to see the final product. Carol, said, Carol says, always have to trust the process. <laughs> Um, oh, my nails, Donna, they are red aspen. Don't judge my nails right now. I lost a nail packing boxes yesterday. But yeah, red aspen nails. 
of what I wear. Okay, I'm getting messier the more I do it. I'm gonna stop. Okay, for our spackle, let's let this dry, scoot it up out of the way. This is Fast and Final Lightweight Spackle from Walmart. I don't even remember how much this was. It was like maybe five or six bucks for this can. And the lid, you have to get it on really tight so it stays workable. Okay, you're gonna need a piping bag. You can find these, you know, at the places, Walmart, whatever. You're gonna need um, a little icing tip. I chose this one that looks kind of like claw, like, I don't know, what is this called? It's like a, maybe like a flower tip or something, I don't know. But I'm gonna fold this bag inside out so that I'm not making as big of a mess. And then kind of open it up like so, so that I have a small cavity to put this in. I've got my fancy little spreader. Y'all, I got a whole set of this stuff on Timu for dirt cheap. It came with this spreader. It came with some icing tips and some bags and all the things. So if you don't have any cake decorating tools like this and you don't want to get expensive ones because you're not planning on decorating cakes with it, go on Timu. Timu has some, some cheap ones. And we're just kind of shoving that down in there. I don't know how much of this we're going to need, but it doesn't matter. You can put extra in your bag if you're afraid you'll run out. And then we can squeeze the excess back into the, the can, whatever we don't use. Okay, now I'm like pulling that up and opening it up a little bit more to put more in there. I don't know if that's enough. Let's just keep going. I, I was afraid it might take like this whole jar just to do these cookies, but it might not too. I don't know. We'll just, we'll stop right there for now. We can always put more in if we need more. Okay, it's not all the way down at the tip, so we're going to have to kind of like work it down there because I didn't do a very good job of getting it in there. So just kind of get it and start squeezing it. Squeegee it down. If you need to, you can put a clip or something right here or like a zip tie. I'm using my plate as a tester here. Squeeze it till I get all the air bubbles out. For those of you who are cake then star tip, thank you. I didn't even see that comment. Uh, for those of you who are cake decorators, feel free to get a good laugh at all this because I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just kind of winging it. Okay, now it's coming out. So I like to do like a little tester. Make sure it's going to turn out good. See that there? Looks good. Um, and here we go. <laughs> this is um, hopefully going to turn out well. Uh, okay. Before we even start that, let's dry this because if I mess up, I want to be able to wipe it away with a baby wipe. And if my paint underneath is wet, I can't do that. Carol says, how do you clean that tip off when you're done? Uh, run it under hot water, scrub it with a little scrubby brush. Should come right, I mean, I've never had any trouble. It just comes all the way, all right off. I've even reused these bags before. Just wash them under hot water. This one is actually a bag that I use on something else. What other questions you guys have? Krista says Dollar Tree sells the bags and tips. I didn't know that. I'll have to check that out. Susan says if you get a different brand of spackle that has more grayish tint, you can add white paint to it. You can also tint this. I've colored this paint yellow before, pink. Like you mix like regular acrylic paint with this and it will make like colored spackle. So then it looks like colored icing. It's really cool. Uh, Carol says, I use Dawn in the hottest water I can stand to wash them. <laughs> Twist the end of the bag close. Yes, I did. I'm just kind of holding it with my hand there. I don't know if y'all got any, any tips for keeping that shut. I do have some little bit of plants that I got at the Dollar Tree. That might hurt. Like these little dudes. I don't know if that'll, that will, I don't trust that to stay on there. My hand is going to hold that better. Getting all of our white paint dry before we start this. Dollar Tree has a section of cake decorating items. I need to check that out, Krista, because I haven't seen that in my Dollar Tree. And we've got a really good Dollar Tree here. Somebody on TikTok says, what are you making? This is a door hanger. So this will hang on a door, kind of like a wreath would. Um, I teach this in my community and in my membership. 
I paint live every Tuesday at noon central. So you can come and join me. We sell these designs in our shop. You can cut out your own wood shapes using the templates or purchase the wood blanks. And this is an 18 inch wood blank and you can follow right along with these tutorials. The um, replay for this video is gonna be available on YouTube and Facebook. So if you wanna go follow me over there, it's Southern Adornments Decor. Um, somebody said, what is in the piping bag? It is called Fast and Final um, Lightweight Spackling from Walmart. <laughs> Okay, it's like 90, 95% dry. So we're, Tamara's impatient. We're gonna go ahead and start. What kind of wood do you use? Um, mostly these days I use quarter inch MDF. That's what these are made of. So if you order from us, that's what you'll be getting. Okay, I'm nervous. Here we go. Hold my breath. Looks so cool. I'm kind of like holding it up above the door hanger and letting it kind of, oh, <laughs> it messed up right there. There we go. And letting it um, kind of trail across. I don't, hold on. I feel like we gotta, we gotta pick that up. Oh, look, it lifts off. That's cool. It lifted off where I didn't do it right. Maybe wipe also to kind of wipe the excess up. Okay, I got to continue that line. Get my pressure back in here. If you need to practice, practice on, you know, cardboard or foam paper plate first. But don't be scared. It's just a craft. It's just going on your front door. <laughs> okay, there's what my first line looks like. What do you think, guys? Feel good? Can y'all see it from all the angles? Whew. Okay, let's do the next one. I'm going to go from this way up to this way next time. So the last time I was kind of dangling it above the cookie and letting it fall on. Now I'm kind of like dragging it along the wood, testing different ways of doing this. I think that worked better. I had a slight bit more control with like where it was going. You love it, Kim? Thank you. Let's do the O. This, okay, the O may be trickier because I'm going to have to go slower and squeeze it out more because the O is thicker than the line around the outside. So I'm like, can you know what I'm doing? I'm trying to hold my hand at an angle where you can see. Uh, it's a little tricky doing this on camera oh my goodness this looks so cool you guys thank goodness for my 11 p.m at night ideas look at that ah! oh that is the coolest thing ever check it out tiktok <laughs> and it doesn't even have to look perfect right like i mean like obviously right through there it doesn't look perfect but it's so cute <laughs> Uh, Dixie says, this is another thing that makes me want to hold my breath. Same. I'm over here holding my breath too, Dixie. <laughs> um, Angela says, it would also look cool if the spackle was colored red. Yeah, you can tint the spackle. You can even like drizzle paint up the sides of the piping bag if you wanted it to be swirled. Keep that in mind. Okay, let's do the next cookie. Okay, I'm gonna have to rotate the door hanger for this next part. This is turning out so cool. And I do think it's working out better for me to like let the tip drag along the door hanger. It's a little thin right there. I'm gonna try to go back over that spot. That looks good, okay. Every now and then you may have to like twist your bag to get it, keep it, keep it pressurized. Let's do the X. So you just have to squeeze extra hard and go a little slower to fill in these fatter letters. That looks so cool. Okay, let's do this side.
I'm going to go over the top of that one. I am glad that I did the, the white paint underneath, I think. I don't know if it would have mattered too much, but it makes me feel better that I don't have to be so perfect with the spackle. Okay, there's the X. Look how great that looks. Look like cookies. April says, looks good enough to eat. Carol says, can you seal the door hanger with the spackle on it? I don't know 100%. I haven't tested that. Does anybody know? I think you can, but I don't want to say for sure because I haven't tested it myself personally. I mean, I think you can seal it, but I guess what I don't know about is how well it will hold up to weather. This is so satisfying. Like, no wonder cake decorator people end up doing this for a career. Like, I want to do this every day. It's very satisfying. It does look just like icing. Yes, it does. Shouldn't you do the letters first? Uh, I don't know if it matters. I think it just matters on whether or not you can manage to do it without, like, getting your hands in it. And I was worried that I couldn't keep my hands out of the center of the letters. Y'all, this is giving me all the all the good feels. I love it. It's turning out even better than I imagined. It's looking so good. And I feel like this door hanger was minimal effort. Like, this is so easy. But yet, it's, like, impressive. You know, like, if you didn't know how to do this and you saw it, you would think, oh, my goodness, how did she do that? That looks so cool. So, it's, it would be easy to wow your customers with these, I feel like. This is not no door hanger you're going to find at Walmart or Hobby Lobby, is it? They don't sell door hangers like this at Hobby Lobby and Walmart. This is one of a kind. The X's are my favorites because, like, the icing kind of ruffles as it comes out. It did take nearly all of that spackle that I put in here to do this, though. Like, you know, I wasn't sure how much to use. Like, I only have just a tiny bit left. So, um, I'm going to hold this up in a second and show you. But for right now, I'm going to show you that, like, when you're done, if you were afraid of wasting any, and this stuff is cheap. Don't worry about wasting a little bit of it. But, look, just squeeze it out of your piping bag and right back into the container. Now everybody's going to be rushing off to the store to buy piping bags and spackle and <laughs> start doing fake bakes. That's what they call it in the crafty world, fake bakes, because they look like fake baked cakes or something, fake baked cookies. Make sure you get this like sealed really good, because I've had this same, and when you think it's sealed like this, it's not. You got to have it sealed, pressed, flush. So just keep squeezing it or hit it with a mallet until it closes, because I've had this same jar for months and it still lasted. Okay, let me switch my camera angle here for you guys. Here we go. Here's what it looks like, y'all. Up close and personal. Here's our cookies. Guys, I am so impressed with myself. <laughs> I love it when I surprise myself and when a project turns out better than I could have expected. Be careful with this because this will take like three or four hours to dry, probably. I don't really know. It just kind of depends on the humidity level and and how thick you put it on so just like lock your cat out of the craft room for a little while or whatever so that it doesn't um get messed up okay questions laura says what color of paint whoops i lost her question what color of paint would you use hold on i can't quite see it because it's small on my screen what kind of paint would you use to make the cookies sugar cookies good question laura um i would probably use light buttermilk it's like an off-white creamy color and then I would do a little bit of, if you're going to do the texture thing, I would do a tiny bit of like burlap or uh, like a tan color mixed with this. Not straight burlap, but like mixed with this to where it's just a shade darker. Um, if you do that, I want to see it. That would be so cute with like pink icing. So yeah, if you want to use this spackle and use it with paint, 
put some spackle in like a container, do a few drops of acrylic paint, and then just kind of like mix it with this or whatever until it's all well incorporated. And if you need more color, add more color, but just kind of do a few drops at a time. You'd be surprised how well this paint can color the spackle if you want to do colored spackle. Um, what other questions do you guys have? Marina says, love it. Great job. Thank you. Hello, Anita. Um, I don't know when Brooke's next retreat is, so I must not be, um, I'm not going to that one because I don't know when it is. Uh, Spencer says, I'm going to try this. You should. Um, I'm looking for any other questions that you guys might have. If you want, if anybody seals it, let me know how you did it. I heard that you can just spray seal over this. I'm just not sure about how well it holds up in the weather. Krista says, I'm a cookier. You can add pearls too to replace sprinkles. I do have some fake sprinkles somewhere around here, but they're not Valentine's themed. So I'm not going to use those today, but that is fun. We need to do another project like this sometime and do sprinkles and stuff. Maybe we could do that in the clubhouse sometime. Look how cute. I'm just so impressed. <laughs> it's not often that I'm like impressed with my own project, but I am today. I'm proud. Um, okay. A few things to note before we go. Southern Enrollments Live tickets are on fr sale Friday um, on the 12th. Come and join me. I'll be live for Friday Fab Five. You can come check in with me, get the link to buy them. Like I said, we're already 70% sold out. So don't wait. I um, mean, you get $100 off your ticket if you buy this weekend. Um, other things to note, this design, if you want to paint your own template and blank is available at shopdoorhangers.com. It's called the XOXO Cookies. So go and find it there. If you want to catch the replay for this, it's on YouTube and Facebook. So thank you all for joining me. Don't forget to hit that follow button if you're not a Southern Adornments fan. See you next time. Bye, y'all.